Hello, Orville Nation. Welcome, everybody. We have a great show. What an episode Joe cooked up for us, huh? What an episode Joe cooked up. I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun watching it. Wow. Um, yeah, we're going to have uh, – let's bring everybody on and let's start. We're running a few minutes late. And uh, let's bring in ladies first. There she is in the backstage. Um, our galactic – Meteorologist, welcome, Katie Nicolau. Welcome, Katie. There you hey. are. Hey, how's it going? My... Oh, good. good to how, see you. How is your week? Pretty good. You know, it's boring. The weather's boring. Everything's boring. But I really? started a new show too, so I'm excited. How did that go? Uh, Wednesday, right? Yes, yeah. We started out on Wednesday. It was uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, for anyone who doesn't know. Uh, we, I started a show on my channel, myself and a friend from college, and we are both chaotic and love the show, so it's perfect. So uh, we're going to be doing it every week, and we're just we're just having a blast with it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. What's uh, Anything new this week for, for yes. other than that show? Well, other than that show, no. But uh, <laughs> no, we okay. will be doing the next episode of Avatar, and we're going to be talking fan theories and what we liked about the episode, and hopefully a few people join as well, and we get to talk about what they like too. What, what I was trying to get to was, there is there any uh, fandom forecasts in the brew? It, they are brewing. It's still, we're training a new chief meteorologist, and on top of that, we're getting into severe weather season, but I'm trying to squeak in one. One very important one, as everyone knows. So uh, it's coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> Alan says, hey, Katie, chocolate. Okay. Hey, yeah, I made some Hook Echo chocolate uh, earlier and posted it on Twitter. It's actually pretty delicious. I was really surprised at my abilities. <laughs> it's dangerous. Um, and let's welcome uh, our uh, friend, Dr. Adega and uh, uh, Dr. and author, Adega Outlaw. Welcome, uh, doctor. How are you? Hey. I'm good. I would be a waterbender, all about the water. Ooh, same, same. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd be whole, in like, air with fire. the tornadoes. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. I just be the avatar. There's the solution. <laughs> Adega, what's, what's new with you this week? Oh, not much. Not really, not much at all. And actually, that's quite good. Uh, nice. It's a quiet town, quiet life. For once, it's pretty good. Everyone's doing well. Awesome. Awesome. All righty. Uh, let's bring in Baron, Dis Baron Destructor himself, uh, Joe Malazzi, who provided us with an amazingly fun episode this week. Hello, Joe. Hello. How goes? Hey. 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 Hello. Hello. Um, we had a lot of fun this week. What did what did you guys think with this episode? This was one of my favorites. Absolutely. Oh. I was completely yeah. thrown off balance from the start. So I was <laughs> I was playing catch up the entire time. Uh but before we jump in, I want to ask Joe, uh Joe, anything you wanna talk about, announce? Uh uh no, no. I mean I just it's hard to believe like we're uh, uh one episode away from uh well episode and a half away from the uh Season two finale. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, wow. yeah, I mean, this was a lot of fun, this episode. It just kind of brought together a lot of the stuff that I'd kind of been setting up for a while. And it hit, hints at uh, a few things that will get paid off uh, next season. Oh. And also both one of my favorite endings. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, like I did tell you, it would be a uh, a bit of a shocker. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't tell us, eh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Now, with Katie, were you able to record your uh, reaction? 
I was I completely forgot to send it to you. I'm gonna have to send it to you here. Oh, you can, <laughs> sh you can sh share it if you want. Yeah, I basically I, I recorded it on my phone, but I oh, okay. I there was shouting. <laughs> 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 this is the best way to describe it. Oh, I'm gonna try and send it your way. We'll see how, how you're sending it. Hmm? Uh, I'll just send it over Twitter. Okay. Yeah. I still have the painting of uh, of Rio's mother. Really? Oh, right. It was one of the things that uh, the yeah. art department gave me. Nice. So uh, I should have you contact the actress and see if she would like it. I also have that a painting of, nice uh, of, uh, of Alex as uh, Rio, standing very regally in uh, in his uh, you know traditional uniform. I bet he loved making this episode. Oh yeah, it was actually his biggest episode, and I know that he was uh, um, a little nervous. Because I remember him, you know, being on set, and he was actually going over the script, and he was like, "Wow, this is like the most I've ever had to do." But he uh, nailed it. He was terrific. Totally. No. Uh, Gap Stargate asked Joe, "What shirt do you have on today?" Uh, today is a Captain America shirt, a T-shirt that I got at uh, the last Comic-Con I attended. Yeah. Cool, yeah, it was a cool shirt. <laughs> um, all righty. Um, well, we started the episode with, um, we started the episode with uh, the, the Raza uh, searching out um, Rio's, I guess, Rio thought they were would be his more trusted general generals mm. probably. Well, yeah, he basically reached out to who he felt was his most trusted general, and there were others there, and they were given the option of joining or not. And he joined, great. If not, that's also fine too. So, you know. Um, let's see. Okay, this is this. I had a few issues today with pictures. Uh, th this is one. So here we go. I have to ask you too. I mean, you can whatever you're doing there, PJ. But um, this, the way the royalty acts, there, I have seen this repeat in real life in many different places. Is that where you draw draw some of the ruthlessness with it? Because uh, there's the Chinese, there's Japanese, there's Native American um, history, historical figures who were equally as brutal or untrusting. I wasn't sure if this is... No, no not really. I mean, yeah, it's just a contrast between who four is, and you see a bit of it of, uh, in four, like uh, in the way he kind of dispatched uh, Akita at the end of their episode really foreshadowed where this is going. And so um, he is faced with the prospect of, yes, he could basically exile his mother uh, or he could just basically have a clean slate. And um, his, the fate of his stepbrother, which is uh, something that a lot of people reacted to, is also hinted at in an episode, uh, episode 306, is it 308? The parallel universe story, where Ooh. he's got he goes in and questions Alt Portia and Boone because he wants to find out how we can basically retake the uh, the throne. And they tell him how we would take the throne. And they say, if you rewatch that scene, they say you with the help of Hero, you retook the throne. Um, but uh, then he kind of started. Uh, um, he, he kind of gave you problems because he was kind of like pushing for uh, expanded rights, but you took care of him. And you see Boone go this uh, cutting gesture, which yeah. is exactly what so happened. So this was planned for a while then. It's all planned. That's what makes it so good. <laughs> Gosh darn it. Sorry, I can't uh, focus my camera. Just keep like high-fiving us. Kind of mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> Blur them out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Joe, what do you think about uh, John Burns' comment? Uh, Rio talking with the android shows he might be killed, but he's not coming. And he's not coming back. It was wonderful dialogue. He's kind okay. of saying goodbye to her. 
Yeah, actually, that was one of my favorite scenes. And uh, I always like to show those instances of warmth in an otherwise seemingly ruthless character. So back in that flashback where they have the vote on whether to keep five, he's the deciding vote that uh, allows her to stay. And in this instant, he gives the Android uh, information saying that, you know, you've got stored backups that exist within you. You just have to find a way to access them, setting up something else that we pay off a little later. Uh, oh. So, um, and I just kind of like those those moments of, of warmth because I mean, he, he, he comes across as, uh, you know, such a sort of a cold opportunist. Uh, and yet you see that, that, that warmth and when he's alone with the Android, the way he interacts with her. And, and Joe, you were talking about 208 or 308? Was, was it 208? Yeah, maybe it was 208. You're right. Sorry. Of course, we're still in season two. Yeah. <laughs> and thanks for the super chat, John Birds. Uh, appreciate it, my friend. Um, and 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 it, it was a great it was a great beginning um, to the to this to the episode. Uh, just the look between these two guys. <laughs> yes. It's like, are you going to say it? All right, I'm going to let you say it. We'll see how this plays out. Yeah. <laughs> like that is the exact look that happens in most classrooms nowadays. Right. Like, oh, you can raise your hand. Okay. <laughs> After you. <laughs> oh, it's a good strategy. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, and. Uh, yeah, he was. Uh, let's see if I can get the right shot. Uh, there was so much action here. I was. It was difficult for me to get the right sh shots. Yeah. Um, let's see. It's just a bit of a blur. Well, just, that'll be the theme of the night: blur. <laughs> um, a lot of sword stuff. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yes. Sure, Alex always loved. Now, have any of you actually held up a, like a legit sword? I you have see, one in Japan. You see that orange bag there on the ground there? Yeah. That is a uh, Civil War officer saber. I put it oh. in the bag to ship it. Yeah. So yeah, I've got. And then over on this one, it's you can't quite see it. It's uh, da, 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 da. it's up against that thing. You can see the tail end of it. It's not a real one, but it's it's got real steel. It's an uh, imitation. Um, Samurai. I don't know oh. the exact class. It's a little short, but it's it's not the real deal. But it's good steel, but it's obviously just you know for market. But the one on the on the ground I haven't put up yet. Um, yeah, it's got the whole scabbard, the whole whole nine shot. It wasn't he kept very well, but yeah, I've held oh. a lot of swords. So we have still my uh, well. we have my grandpa's old swords, and I tried to lift it as a kid, and those things are heavier than I expected. So for him mm -hmm. to be able to move it. Like either in real world or in sci-fi, like that's impressive. It all depends on which type you have. Mm -hmm. um, True, yeah. And also, I mean, we, we, you know, there's a hero sword, which is you know a a, a, a weighted sword, and then there's our uh, 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 you know sort of uh, action sword, which I believe is made of bamboo, colored bamboo, painted bamboo, because it's kind of a steel uh, appearance. Just quick, grab the silver spray paint. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, this is right before this guy was all being all brave. And as soon as he bumped, uh, as soon as he bumped uh, for, for, well, it's for Rio, um, that, I thought that was very brazen of him that he bumped, he goes ahead and bumps him. Yeah. I mean, essentially what he's doing is, is basically he's demonstrating that, you know, he's unworthy of respect and hoping that, uh, you know, the rest of the crew rallies to him and they capture him, they capture Rio and bring him back and uh, maybe gets promoted instead of losing his head. <laughs> Some alternate uh, uh, reality, perhaps. I found myself multiple times during this episode when someone went up against Rio, just like, and they're dead. <laughs> <laughs> dead, dead, dead. <laughs> no. Well, this episode was directed by Will Waring who was a uh, director on Stargate, many Stargates, and uh, 
a guy who works a lot. I mean, he worked on Game of Thrones. He worked on it and the It sequel. And what is he? You know, I asked him to join, but he was off to like Hungary to shoot a movie. So he apologizes. Oh. But um, Will is known for his trademark pineapples. Uh, you know, it's a Will wearing episode because there is always a pineapple. You will always see a pineapple <laughs> in uh, uh, somewhere in the episode, and he managed to put a pineapple in this episode. I'm sure what the deal was. You know, uh, he, he didn't tell the story, but I think it goes back to he he. I think he was like a camera operator, and they were shooting an action. It was an action movie, and there was a a, a, a car chase, and. He, for some reason, he had a banana that, or, or, a, or a pineapple that he got from the craft services that was left over, and he had it in the back of the car, and he left it there and forgot about it, and they do this whole chase sequence, and the director's watching the cut afterwards, and there's this pineapple <laughs> rattling around in the back. Oh, man. He lost it. And that kind of inspired uh, Will. So in every, uh, an episode of every show, pretty much every show he's ever directed, you will see a, a pineapple. That's great. Where was it in this one? Uh, it's in, I think, the later in the episode where five, where they, where, where, um, uh, uh, they mentioned five, oh, she's of no consequence, and she's hiding in the stairway and the kind of servants walk by holding a tray with, I think, uh, fruit and drinks, and there's a pineapple on the tray. Nice. <laughs> uh, John Burns, uh, thanks. The decision to kill his brother was something that I had an issue with. Rio is the last one of his line. If he gets killed, his brother is the heir. Um, yeah, I, but, I mean, he. Well, I mean, I guess just a no unless he 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 has a son, but. Uh, for Rio, uh, he's less interested in the continuing the family line and more interested in consolidating his rule. And that's pretty clear given the type of character he is. Do you, are the fans, were we supposed to, you, you obviously thought most of us would be shocked by him killing his brother, right, John? Yes, absolutely. Rightly assumed. Yes. Rightly assumed. <laughs> but I did plant the seed. I did plant the seed back in episode 208, I guess it was, yeah. But there's also the issue where he got his memory back and, you know, for yeah, whether you had intended that or not, um, he's a totally different character now. Yeah, and it's something they discuss, right? The fact that you're not resetting back to who you were because those were the versions that we, we glimpsed in uh, episode 203, but you are, as Six pointed out, informed by who you are now. So you're kind of a mix. Right. That's going to be like an internal war going on at that mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. And Joe, what do you think about Jeff Beeler's comment? Uh, Rio clears his deck emotionally, then starts out. Uh, I mean, yeah, he's, he's kind of like wiping the slate, right? Clean with I, getting. I, yes, in a way he is kind of wiping the slate clean. But I mean, keep in mind that, um, there's that moment when uh, Nix is confronted with the knife and is like, and realizes that Rio kind of killed her brother. And uh, actually not Rio, but four. So this is before he, you know, did the memory switch. So that's something to keep in mind that, that there was, he always had that potential and we saw glimpses of that throughout the, uh, and something kind of we layered in throughout the, the, sh the, uh, the show up to this point, the way he treated Akita, the one, the, there's that episode, in, um, the two-parter in the op with Wexler and his crew, when they go into the space station and they deal with the security and all the other, the rest of the crew use non-lethal force to take out the security guards, but he does not. He uses a sword and just kind of slaughters them. So, you know, if you look back, you will realize that this is kind of being uh, hinted at throughout. I am so blind to everything. <laughs> um, You'll catch it all on the rewatch. Yes. That's what I imagine a lot of people are doing right now in the comment mm -hmm. section. Just like, oh my gosh, I see this now. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. And Rapunzel suggests we call him now for Rio. <laughs> for Rio. Plus Rio. I like that. <laughs> For you. 
Um, it is weird to think about. He is definitely a different character now. Like, he's certainly informed by his past. I didn't like what. I, ever since I finished the episode, I've been thinking like, would four have killed all of them? With like, would Rio definitely would have killed all of them? But mm -hmm. would four have done that? That's been nagging at me. <laughs> would he have killed his stepmother? Oh yeah, possibly. Awesome. Yeah. Would he I have think killed the stepmother? Yeah. Would he have killed the Probably. Sears? Probably would have killed uh, his 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 uh, mother's uh, lieutenant. The only question is uh, is uh, uh, hero. Would he have killed hero? Probably not. I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> uh, Karina, I'm that way too. Uh, Joe, Karine asked, was Rio's decision purely his uh, his old personality or was he the mix of the two responsible? Yeah, well, I think you answered that kind of. Yeah, um, he, it, it is kind of a mix of the two. I'm sure it's like a, a like a, an ongoing uh, battle. Mm. Um, and we see here the scene uh, where he's talking to Nix and, and he says, you know, I, my feelings haven't changed for you. But she says, yeah, but you have. Mm -hmm. and, um, so her in five sense, he is different. And, and basically for her, it's almost like a personal uh, 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 kind of slap in the face in that they're so close and he didn't tell her that he was going to do this. And so he's, it's almost like he's, he's well, he is kind of someone different than the guy she... Um, didn't necessarily fell in love with. I don't know if they were in love, but you know, uh, developed feelings for him, certainly. Now, was this intended with you when you were writing it that she's got the ability to foresee things and yet she's always wrong with four? Yeah, I mean, she's able to more her ability to foresee things is is more um more kind of in the moment reactive like like fighting where whether i whereas her her brother um was really more um kind of a big picture i mean you you see a flash of it in in i think episode six where she kind of like plays out what's about to happen. But yeah, I mean, there is an irony in the fact that she is, you know, sort of pre to a certain degree and yet uh, has kind of an inability to read him. Okay. Uh, and uh, I think we'll, uh, we'll save Katie's uh, reaction for, for when we get to it. <laughs> I realize right. it's not quite as much out external shouting as it was internal. Like you can see it in my face. I'm just like, uh, get, you'll see it. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. And uh, yeah, like Joe said, um, uh, it's not just, yeah, it's five as well. And we see here that there's this moment of, um, of, of six uh, approaching five, <laughs> and she says, "Well, the vents are too small to, yeah, mm -hmm. to eat." I can um, relate to that. Just like I'm yeah, so anywhere but there. Yeah, there's a lot of kind of avoidance. There's you know five avoiding uh, Rio, and then there's also Rio avoiding three, and three yeah. suspects he knows something about me that he doesn't want to say. I want to know. Well, you'll find out. Eventually, I've become too emotionally invested in three. <laughs> <laughs> Every time, <laughs> uh, guys, and don't forget tomorrow night we're going to be interviewing uh, Matt Ryan and uh, Anna Fokenstall. Oh, nice. uh, we're going to be oh. Matt's going to be we're gonna, he's going to be showing us about his gun, uh, his weapons development, his dark matter uh, weapons uh, cachet, <laughs> yes, <laughs> and uh, and Anna's uh, all her um, all of Anna's cool cool uh props and stuff uh we've seen her before you guys have seen her before uh if oh, you yeah. haven't you're gonna want to tune it um it, didn't it joe did it, it it really seemed like six was more uh much more uh i don't know what the right word is maybe tender maybe 
to, to contrast everybody forgiving. else. I think forgiving. forgiving. And he's always kind of been the forgiving character. And and he this is coming from a guy who ha has been granted forgiveness for his what he has done uh, or what he did to them at the end of season one. And it's taken this entire second season to redeem himself in their eyes. And so it makes sense, given who he is, that he would want to give Rio the benefit of the doubt. Okay. Um, and I think Joe, uh, I think Time Prophet says that I, I'm, I think it's what, what happens at the end. Uh, uh, he says, do you think that, uh, that two would have seen this coming? I can't believe they followed him so blindly. It was only five that saw it. I'm not sure um, what he means by followed so blindly. I mean, they, 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 they certainly want to uh, help him, but he did not allow them to help. So she went after him because so far as he concerned, even if he did uh, acquire his old mem memories, he's still a member of the crew. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, uh, and John Burns asked, um, and it's great. We have, uh, we have a little more time today because we don't have a guest to ask Joe questions from the chat. Um, and this, well, one second. Let me read this one. Discussion Rio. Let me just make sure I got the right question. Um, and the discussion Rio has with Six about Two and Rio thinking about what to do with Six is kind of strange concept for Six. Um, sorry. Uh, John, re repost the question, please. I, I don't see it right now. I don't now. think it's really a question. It's more like it's kind of weird. Yeah, okay. It's kind of weird. Um, oh, oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Uh, yeah, remember what to okay, discuss killing you. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, it, it was kind of strange, and we're, we're about to get to that. Uh, we're about to get to that scene. Um, it was kind of strange about um, that little conversation they had with Six and um, – with Six and uh, – with Four, with Rio and so Four. Um, so this, at this point, is he Rapunzel. just like – is he Rio now and no – like is Four just integrated no, into Rio? He's, he's part – you know, Rio and Four. So okay. you know, he's kind of the best of both worlds. For you. Yeah, yeah. I think it would be better. Rapunzel has a good question. Um, Ooh, why should I just check out the... When story? Six said they anticipated our every move so far, did Two realize that the Seers were involved at that moment? At, at the end, it would, she, she seems to consider some possibility of, uh, of, uh, of, of something. We don't really know what it is, but okay. perhaps she did, which is why she ended up splitting five off. Okay. I always um, found the idea of prophecy, which I love how this played out at the end. Um, whether it be from, you know, said prophets or the oracles or what have you throughout time, they present a potential view of the future. And some people take it as absolute. Obviously, the <clears throat> seers took it as absolute or obs um, absolute. And yet it never is. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Given their experience that they would have necessarily seen it as an absolute, it always comes down to probabilities. And based on the people as, you know, the, these individuals as they know them. And so they were able to predict pretty much all the moves until the end. And one thing perhaps they didn't take into consideration was uh, how Rio, having gotten his memories back, would influence four. So maybe four, 
would have sent his uh, stepmother into exile and, uh, you know, established a fruitful uh, alliance with the seers and, uh, you know, named his, his stepbrother to the court. Um, but... Uh, now, I have you... a, another question for you, too. When his stepmother had those ships destroyed with those captains on it, was it in your mind a mark of her fear or ruthlessness? It was absolutely both. her. It was absolutely her ruthlessness. I think. Mm. Um, you know, the, this the seers foresaw the coup, what Hero would do, so she ensured that uh, any threat to her would be taken out. And so, really, what her her actions kind of parallel Rio's actions at the end, right? You don't want any, and, and it's something that, you know, is paralleled even earlier by his killing Akita. You don't want to leave any, uh, you know, potential uh, enemies, uh, you know, around. True. Mm -hmm. All those loose ends. Yes, loose ends. Tie them up all neatly at the end of this episode. And then slice them with the sword just for good measure. <laughs> No, it just, it was kind of, it hit me kind of hard simply because you know that under their leadership, they are losing. How much resources do they have to expend? Mm -hmm. And yeah, the decision for her to do that had to be either abject fear of losing her life or she just doesn't care. Just yes. absolutely ruthless. It, and, yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, they, they did talk about the fact that they're losing the war. So. Right. So taking out those heavy cruisers was just, uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a good sting. It was one of those things where you can read in the story and go, that had to hurt in a lot mm -hmm. of ways. Mm -hmm. uh, this, was the, uh, this was the scene that, um, that John was mentioning. I don't see the question either, I, uh, John, um, but I wanted to, uh, what did, how did you guys feel about this, this scene? Um, it was kind of strange. It was a very awkward scene. Um, and uh, and and six is very relaxed as uh, as Rio approaches him. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, having had that conversation with five, he feels that four is still very much a part of him. Um, you know, and 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 exactly, yeah. the fact that Rio is being very open with him about the past and sort of he offers up another piece to the puzzle, like that conversation, that recorded conversation that five found at the end of season one, where it's two and four talking, you know, uh, what are we going to do? We're going to kill him, you know, when we come out of stasis, it's agreed, we, you know, and he just kind of sheds a little light on, on, on that conversation. And then we also see we all, in the uh, episode 208, we saw kind of the parallel universe, uh, universe version where uh, two just took care of him, uh, you know, in the, in the recorded uh, video message he was giving. That's right, yeah. This scene gave me major, like, you know the song that anything you can do, I can do better version, and it's mm -hmm. like, no, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Like, I, that was exactly like, you can't take the ship. I'm going to take the technology. Yeah, well, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder which will win out now. Hmm. All the uh, for me, this scene, this scene, like just sheds a lot of light on on the on the, on the season one and two, for me. That's my my take on this scene. Mm -hmm. um, and we kind of get more little tidbits about behind, you know, what was what's what's been going on. Uh, and uh, thank you, Ensign Ricky. Uh, good to see you. And uh, have we had Yodel on yet? No, we haven't. Uh, but you sent her a message on TikTok. Oh, wow. Awesome. Okay. Nice. Thank you, Ricky. Thanks, my friend. Um, what, was your, what, what was your favorite part of this episode, uh, guys, Adega and Katie and Joe? What was your favorite part? Oh. Ladies first. <laughs> my favorite part personally was just five being like, well, the vents were too small. Mm -hmm. like, I don't know why, but that tickled me for some so, reason. So sarcastic, that kid. <laughs> yes. Oh, I relate. <laughs> I, had no, I two... love the whole just idea of like uh, anywhere but there. And like anything where it's like five and three. 
I don't know, just the way they're like, I don't trust him. And I'm like, just kind of, I'm vibing with that, guys. Let's mm -hmm. stay away from him. Don't get hurt. <laughs> like, just that was my favorite part where they're just like, ah, no, <laughs> not going with the flow. Also, no, I just I was looking at the comments. Um, Rapunzel says, he did ask nicely. So, yes, he did. Let's establish the fact that he did ask nicely. So whatever ensues. <laughs> uh, uh, Louis says, uh, I was wondering if he was manipulating them, giving the connection, uh, giving the connection he was making with them before he left. He must have known they'd come for him if he got into trouble. That's a mm. possibility. Um, and then uh, Blackjack DRX asks three's comment about Rio avoiding him. Will three ever find out why? And the answer to that is yes. Oh, good. Okay. My um, two, I had two favorite. Um, yeah, please just to answer your question. Please. Um, I. It's kind. Of, it wasn't. I don't know if it was a big scene in your mind or not, but when he was imprisoned, and I can't remember her name, and she keeps coming in all the time. The, uh, yeah. And. She, they're talking back and forth and she explained that she had loved him. Mm -hmm. That was really big for me. I, mm -hmm. I like that scene a lot. Uh, and it me explains too. her instant devotion to him when he makes the call and maybe that they had planned something out in the prison cell. We never got to find out. Um, the other scene was, again, I go back to those seers where he says, okay, tell me seer, what's gonna happen now? I'd love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just like, yeah. let's see your arrogance be wrong. <laughs> and I think regardless of what he said, he probably would have proved them wrong just mm -hmm. because he wanted to. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, I just thought of another one, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. The damsel in distress reversal. When I was like, hi, I'm here to rescue you. It's like, yes, <laughs> go rescue the prince. Yeah. <laughs> Underestimating her. And in fact, actually, there's a gag in a later episode where I think three says something with like the effect of it. It's okay. I'm sure, you know, five's working on something. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, yeah, there was a lot of chat. Uh, there was a lot of people in the chat talking about the seers um, mm -hmm. and why uh, and how could they not see what was going to happen or. Um, Again, it's and, all probabilities. They can't predict the future. They can predict, you know, th their predictions are based on the probabilities. Yeah, and if they got like 80% of a probability showing up, that's what they're going to run with. And 80% of the time, they're going to be right. That makes sense. Yeah, and so it also, you know, the fact that uh, I could predict, for instance, you know, my wife is going to do this. And then because I predict it, she will do the opposite. You know, <laughs> maybe, you know she was going to do it, but I well, it nice. hey. will affect her... Uh, uh, her response. Wonder how their March Madness brackets would look. Hmm. Okay. Let me uh, put up Did you know there image. isn't a single perfect bracket anymore? No. Every I'm bracket is busted. Nice. Who, who, it's like Oregon State is a. Uh, yeah. <laughs> bracket. Oh, busted. Roberts almost made it. Yeah. Uh, Joe, tell us. Tell us mm -hmm. that the Whiskey Club played. Uh, um, played some version of bowling at, on the set after this, uh, after you guys filmed. Oh yeah. I love that kind of bowling. Uh, <laughs> it was cool. Uh, bowling alley uh, set, just kind of a distinct uh, look for the ship in general. Uh, uh, Ian designed the, the actual ship. Um, so this, the, uh, to, resemble a, uh, it's based on a samurai helmet. Ooh. I should get, get the, uh, the early concept work for that. Um, wow. And uh, yeah, this was a, this was a fun, this is an interesting scene um, where, where um, they finally get to talk, the brother to brother. Yeah. Face to face. A happy reunion. I was totally in line with the guards. They're like, hey, no, we aren't leaving you alone. Like, mm -hmm. what guard leaves? No, you at least leave one person there. 
I, I think Joe answered this question kind of in the uh, earlier. Uh, Rio in the alternate universe would be where Rio is now, or the, the problem was five was missing from the alternate universe. Yeah, it would have been different in that, I mean, uh, alternate portion, Boone, do tell him you do retake the throne. So in the AU, in fact, in the AU episode, he is the emperor of... Uh, uh, of Zyron and, uh, you know, they arrange that meeting where they, uh, um, uh, ambush portion Boone. So, um, he is kind of in the state, same place, maybe a little more advanced, a little more down the road. Uh, thank you, John. And yeah, Joe, that was such a star Wars moment. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously was that was great. the intention. Yes. yes. Um, it would have been funny if you had said, yeah, aren't you a little short for a, <laughs> you know, five is a lot like Leia. Just like you know what, mm -hmm. everyone has this expectation of me, and I'm just gonna blow them away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it was such a Luke Skywalker moment, John. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, absolutely. Um, and uh, we haven't. Um, let me see. Okay. And we're going to get to that Luke Skywalker moment shortly. Uh, Once they got into the uh, the palace and, like, when the rescue crew was coming for him, I don't know why this part stuck out to me in the episode, but three wearing a robe. Like, it mm -hmm. was just like, mm, you aren't happy wearing that. It was like a total <laughs> Christmas story. Like, are you happy wearing that? Do you want to take that off? <laughs> you look adorable. Yeah. Oh, it's like, okay, yeah, five, totally go with a cloak. Two, <laughs> sure, go for it. Three. Mm. Yeah. yeah, some some wear it better than others, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we see here that after their the brother brother meeting, um that uh his stepbrother uh confronts his his mother about what happened what really happened. And we get the truth, finally. I instantly thought she was gonna kill him right there. <laughs> she's such a like she's a like a black widow, like just total knife to the heart. I don't care who you are. I do give Joe ideas. <laughs> <laughs> His brother always came across as being very, very weak to me. Never should have been emperor. Mm. Yeah. Which is kind of ironic, the fact that he was emperor. Right. He, his mother is the de facto ruler. He seems like he would have been a, like a fun guy to hang out with at his college. Like he's always spending time in the library. Yeah. Definitely not like team captain material. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, some, I, um, Rapunzel mentions, I really love those Ishida robes, gorgeous. Uh, kudos to our wardrobe department and uh, uh, Noreen Landry, our costume designer, who I asked to uh, guest with us at some point, and uh, she has broken her wrist. She actually took a fall, so she's in kind of re she's rehabbing it. Um, so hopefully, she will join us in uh, for a season three episode. Very Sweet. cool! Wow, Joe. Yeah. Um, and Joe, do you want to? Do you want to tell us again where this palace? This was like an old. Uh, yeah, this was. Um, said, um, it's like a. What? It's like a, It's really more Spanish design, uh, but it's it's like a it's a banquet for for uh, for wedding like it's a, it's a wedding banquet hall. It's kind of a cool one too. Yeah, I imagine like you just have someone accidentally forget to clean up one of the pools of blood. It's like. The next wedding party comes and yeah. what happened here? And, yeah. Sorry, just forgot this. Thank you. It's, it's, it's course <laughs> you can eat it. Like go ahead, lick it. Uh, and Joe, where do you want to tell us again? You, you told us once before. Uh, who made the royal symbol? It works really well. Uh, yeah. Um, so um, Roxanne Boris. I'm trying to remember her last name. Yeah, Roxanne Boren, Boris did uh, all the insignias, all the design. She did all the uh, kind of the wall art and the cool kind of uh, advertisements uh, whenever we would hit the space stations. Um, 
you know, incredibly, incredibly uh, talented. Uh, and that's well, that's funny... not just a 90s thing, John's brain. He talked about stains on the dress. That, that's historical over and over and over again. You can never hide the blood completely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's actually been bad. Oh, very nice. See, that's when you just dye the dress red and go from there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just kind dunk of just it in the blood. That you come up with that, uh, that solution so easily. Yeah, Katie knows I have, I have too accidentally quick, <laughs> formed many scars due to crafting. You, at, at a certain point, you just make it a tie dye shirt. Crafting or carving? No. <laughs> well, needless to say, I bought a, a scroll saw, uh, and my coworkers immediately worried. <laughs> They're, they're, they made sure that I'm up to date on my tetanus shots, so we're good. Um, and of course, we see here uh, we see here that uh, that um, what is the the empress's name again, Joe? Uh, the actress who plays her, or the character? Um, I don't know if we did we never revealed. Oh, okay, the my bad, right. my bad. So she's basically taking control, and 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 uh, and she they, they're they're receiving this transmission. Um, that and dress is a Mas power move. Mm. <laughs> and Matt Ryan says, "Joe, did you save all the graphic killings for this episode?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's maybe a, a few more to go. Like Early on, when you slice a dude's head cleanly off, it's like, mm -hmm. oh, it's this kind of an episode. Okay. I need so to use a sheet of clothing oh, line. Yeah. Yes. Oh, let's ask Noreen about that. That would actually be cool. Mm. You get all the cosplayers. <laughs> yeah. Not people, people ask Katie but I have probably been responsible for the deaths of 102 Zebra Danio fish. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> One of them survived. His name was Moriarty, and I like to blame him for all the other deaths. <laughs> hmm. It was not good. <laughs> Never let a high schooler do a school project involving fish. That's all I'm hmm. going to say. They get attached, then they tell their friends to flush them down the toilet. One of their friends doesn't flush it down the toilet, and the school goes into a panic. <laughs> Dead fish uh, in the bathroom. Anyway. Thanks for the fact check, Rapunzel. Yeah. You seem... Kind of emotionally scarred by this uh, oh, very much so. incident from your past. <laughs> yes, one person from the high school has given me all these trust issues mm. that are being brought up by your show. <laughs> <laughs> Standing behind um, uh, the Empress is uh, Ellen Wong, whose character Misaki Han, uh, Han Shire Khan, the uh, Royal Guard, takes, takes over Akita. Um, she was introduced at the end Oh no! The, the the second episode of season two, um, and that she 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 visits the uh, uh, Hyperion Eight prison to take custody of the prisoner. Uh, Ellen uh, is known. Uh, I don't know if you saw a movie called uh, Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, yeah Scott I've Pilgrim. Heard of it, actually, I, I heard it. I heard about it. You would you you seem like the type of person that you would love the Scott Pilgrim movie. Oh, she plays cool. a character called Knives Chow. Um, who is, uh, you know, I, I think there's a little bit of, uh, of, uh, of Masaki Han and, and, and Knives Chow and, and, and vice versa. Cool. Now, I did have a question during the episode, and I thought I have to be wrong about this, but is Masaki Ryo's, are these, they aren't related at all, They're right? not related, no, okay, no. But they a grew huge up <laughs> During the jail cell scene, I was like, Joe, what's no, going no, they're on? They're not here? related, but they <laughs> they they're like childhood friends who grew up together. Okay. Much better. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, did anybody think he was not gonna be dead when they saw this? Adega? No. Nah, that's that's um, that setup has happened several times. You've seen it on Babylon Five or this or that or the other, and it just it was expected. It was, but the buildup was you hoped that it wouldn't be. But you, you, even he knew. 
right. by the look on his face when he called to him and did not respond. You know, when, when he starts walking towards that chair, it's like he knows, yep. we all know, we're just waiting for that turn to confirm. Yep. Plus, who sits slightly askew while looking at a fireplace? Like, hmm, yes, let me just look at it with my neck tilted all the way mm -hmm. down. I think the biggest thing here, though, is with him turned away is how was it done? Was he poisoned? Was he stabbed in the heart? Is he missing part of his throat? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Such That's a nice escalation there. How was it done? How was it done? <laughs> Oh, there's all oh. kinds of ways to do it. I was going to say, you can, yeah, I imagine you could get very imaginative when it comes to these killings. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it depends how grisly you want to go. Um, by the way, you, you mentioned that that um, conversation that uh, Misaki has with uh, Ryo in the cell. And um, someone says, uh, oh, Rapunzel said, thanks to Misaki, and I have trust issues with pudding. And, that, that story, and actually, I kind of lifted that story from my father. And that happened to my father when he was a kid him and his sister were sent to bed without supper. And so they snuck downstairs and they discovered what they thought was pudding. And my father took the first bite and my sister was, and uh, his sister was like, how is it? And he was like, mm, good. And he was trying to get her to take a bite. And she oh. was like, no, there's something wrong. And it turned out it was because it was chicken fat. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Well, she was smart. Yeah. <laughs> It's one Masaki of those things that's so bad. Yes. You just have to share oh. it with others. Yeah. Joe, we have a we have a guest backstage. Oh, how exciting! Who could it be? Um, surprise, surprise! Uh, does Ooh. anybody in the in the chat want to guess who it is? Does the chat want to guess? <laughs> I will let Joe introduce him. Ah, okay. Um, he is a uh, an actor who is totally unlike his ruthless. Uh, character he plays on Dark Matter, one of the nicest guys you could ever hope to meet. Very incredibly warm uh, and very funny individual, the lovely and talented Alex Mallory Jr. Woo! All right. Am I in here? Can you see me? Hey! Yeah. hey. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Alex. How are Emperor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm actually staying in a, in a real palace while uh, at work, so. This is no. pretty fitting. It's funny. Yeah. Where are you exactly? I'm in the Dominican Republic. Um, I can't recall exactly what part of it. I think Rio San Juan or something like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm at well, work. Done. I'm glad you can Thank make you. it. I, I, I know that basically I invited Alex and, you know, he's blown up since Dark Matter and he's on. <laughs> you, you would have to tell us all the, the stuff you've been doing. But yeah. uh, he was shooting today, and he's like, I don't know if I can make it. And I was like, look, it's very casual. If you can make it, you know, uh, great. If not, we'll try another time. But so I'm glad, actually, you were able to uh, to make it. We've been discussing the episode. Uh, PJ is our host over on. It's an honor. Thank you for joining us. Oh, hello, hello. Is a sci-fi author. And over here is meteorologist Katie, who is just watching uh, the show episode by episode and was shocked oh, by the by the uh, shocking churn. And I, and I was saying that this was like a huge episode for you uh, because I remember actually on set where we were shooting, I forget what episode we were doing and you were in the wings, you had this, you had the script and you were so intense and, and you know, because you just wanted to do a great job. And, you, and that was always your attitude, but especially for this episode, because we, it, we gave you so much to do and you just nailed it. I mean, this, this Thank was- you, yeah. Just thought, uh, you know, just uh, a, a, an amazing performance. Thank you, man. Wow, like, I well, I don't know what to say. What am I supposed to say? Um, yeah, no, it was a uh, it was a challenging series because it, it was prior Dark Matter. I was just doing like one liners here and there, and um, I think I had one recurring role. I don't even remember. Um, a bunch of student films. Um, but yeah, when you gave me the responsibility of four and, and Rio, man, was I excited. Um, and, and I'm, I'm glad that I delivered in a way, uh, uh that made you happy, Joe. And oh, I, there, there's a screenshot of swords on me. Oh yeah. Yeah. Always with the swords. 
Do, do you remember the uh, audition tape you sent in for? Uh, I do. This? I do. So I was with um, this agent Doug Patterson at the time, and gave me a call. Um, He's like, Alex, this is a quick turnaround. Um, you weren't even on the list, um, but I, I fought for it. I, I need the audition by um, by the morning or something like that. I was like, I, I okay, cool, let's do it. Um, I got the script. It was, let me see if I remember the scenes. Um, one of them was in the war chamber at um, in Zyron when it was... Rio saying he wanted to just make his father proud kind of thing. I can't remember that, uh, which exactly which scene. And then I can't remember the other two, the, uh, but they were lengthy. Oh, well, one of them was that scene in, uh, I think it was episode one or two, where you are um, interrogating the guard, the sergeant. You Yes. You, and you say, um, you know, torture can be very uh, 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 cathartic. Cathartic. But yeah, I <laughs> almost everybody who came in and did that scene was just so like like really threatening and and you I were so subtle in the performance but so effective because you didn't you weren't like you know scary um well you were kind of scary and kind of like very subtle but you weren't over the top you were just kind of like slowly putting on a pair of leather gloves like you were getting ready to go down to, you know, get down to business and i remember man that is such an interesting choice and i love that and then we brought you in for like the uh you know for the callbacks and and uh i remember you you there were the auditions but you also sent in a um sometimes actually we'll, we'll send in kind of demo reels and it was you taping up your hands and oh. <laughs> beatboxing. I didn't have an action reel, man. And and I was like, I gotta show something. I gotta show something. So I um I don't know, it was like a Sony cyber shot or something like that. And I was like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta look for, for for hand wraps. Let me look for hand wraps. I remember just going on uh I was living at my mom's at the time and um I got outside on the driveway in front of the garage and it was it was raining or something. I don't know if it was cold or raining, but it wasn't it wasn't pretty at all. And I'm like, okay, cool. Let me just try a whole bunch of kicks and punches and it worked out. It, it was it was great because it, it left an impression on my mind because usually actors will, will write, oh, um, you know, I I do what is it? Uh, 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 I do my own stunts. What was it? The, the, the Israeli, it sounds like a, a, a Thai dish. Uh, oh, uh, Krav Maga. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think Mel said, uh, uh, Mel, uh, Melissa said that she did Krav Maga. I don't, I don't know if that's true. But I mean, I mean, on, on like, for instance, on Stargate, where actors would be like, oh, you know, special skills, horseback riding. So we're like, great, let's get you on a horse. And they're terrified of horses. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, it was great to see you. Now, before, before we move on, I have to ask, just so yep. the audience knows, the viewers know, what have you been working on? What what can we look forward to so far as Alice Millar Jr. is concerned? Uh, well, right now on Netflix is Ginny and Georgia. That one is doing really well. I'm really happy about that role because I play this private investigator who's just, I don't know, he seems serious, but he's pretty silly. Um, get to see an Asian with a Texan accent on TV for the first time. <laughs> and, it's, uh, and we just we just surpassed Tiger King uh, for this record of being number one for, I think it was 20, I think we're at 28 days now. Amazing. Number wow. one worldwide, yeah. So we're really happy about that. Uh, hopefully Take we have a second season two. Yeah. 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 Nice. Um, what else? Um, just before this project, I finished um, the Adam Project, which shot out in Vancouver. Um, that one, just an insane lineup of people. I don't know how I managed to sneak my way in there. Um, sorry, Ryan Reynolds, um, Catherine Keener, Mark Ruffalo, Jennifer Garner, uh, Zoe Saldana, um, this kid, newcomer kid, Walker Scobell, amazing, amazing actor. Um, yeah, and then little old me, man. <laughs> um, he just proved Sean Levy was, um, is directing that. Um, 
Am I, did I freeze? Yep, momentarily, but we got it. Oh, shoot. Right. Sorry. Uh, yeah, and no, Sean Lee is directing that. Um, got to see a few things of it so far, and it looks really cool. It's a sci-fi movie, so I'm, I'm happy to be back in sci-fi. Um, and so Ryan's character, Big Adam, mm-hmm. he, uh, he and I go to work for this um, – I don't know how much I can say. We're for this industry um, okay. where time travel exists. So it is a time traveling thing, Joe. <laughs> um, and uh, oh. someone does something and I basically have to go and find uh, Reynolds somewhere in the loophole of time and uh, and, 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 and handle my business. Nice. Handle my when, business. When is yeah. that? Uh, does it have a release date? No, there's no release date yet. Um, but it is a Netflix original. Mm-hmm. Um, and right now I'm in the Dominican filming Shotgun Wedding. Jason Moore, uh, wonderful director. He is leading the way for this one. And this this lineup, it's a it's a rom com. Uh this lineup is incredible too, man. You got uh Jennifer Lopez leading the way. Um Josh Damel, um uh, Lenny Kravitz, Cheech, Marin, um, Jennifer Coolidge. Um, uh, Darcy. Oh, God bless me for not remembering her last name. But anyways, it's a, it's a lineup of all stars again, and I don't know how I managed to squeeze my way in this one as well. But I mean, you being here, I baby. am. But you know, if and when I get that dark matter miniseries off the ground, you're gonna make room, right? You're gonna. I. I it's. I, I'm just keeping busy until then. <laughs> I really everything just need this work to pay the bills. I'm waiting for everything. I'm waiting for that. That's that's, <laughs> that's all I'm waiting for, man. I, I you know I need to be there. I we so wanted season four or a mini series. We so wanted Alex. I want ten seasons of this thing, man, and like a spinoff. Of yeah, something, or a spin-off? I hell yeah, I want a spinoff, Judge. You know, without trying to sound indecent, I'd love to swing swords my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, I mean, how much sword work did you do before the show? Zero. Zero. Um, before the show, all I had was um, hand-to-hand combat and experience in Taekwondo. Um, I think we had, what was it, like two or three weeks before we had to go to camera and after booking. Um, yeah, I get into the room and there's, uh, first off, I turn the corner and there's Jodell. Um, just she just gives me this slow pan over look, and I'm like, okay, no, this is not happening because I was in <laughs> Silent Hill. Is I got to tell you, horrified me as a child, <laughs> uh, as a young teen, and so to see her there with the long hair and just slowly look over at me, not even introducing, not a hi, not a, you know hi, uh, just looking. I'm like, okay, now you gotta you gotta get the hell away from me real quick. <laughs> <laughs> and um, John Stead hands me two swords, and he's like, "Okay, well, uh, let's get to this, brother." Um, Alan Kang, who was my stunt double, um, he warned me. He was like, "Your shins are going to take a beating," and they did. And, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. But by the end of Dark Matter, it was great, man. I, I learned nunchucks, size, bow staff, katana, obviously, and guns. Lots of guns. Alex, uh, in the chat, they're asking, how long do you spend in the gym every day? Uh, in the morning, I wake up before work and I do an hour of stairs. And then um, in the afternoon, I'll do a second workout of just lifting. Um, but this is all brand new. Um I, I used to do like a little bit of CrossFit before Dark Matter. I'd get up at like three or whatever because our call time, Joe, would be very early. Um, hey, hey, I was like, hey, I, I got before, before you complete that thought, our call time would be very early. Um, some of you may notice that uh, Alex is fairly tattooed. Tattooed. <laughs> tattooed. So I want to know whenever we would have to do like a shirtless scene. We would have to cover up those tattoos. So when did you get in and how long would it take for them to cover those tattoos? Like two two hours. Two hours. 45 minutes, but 
but yeah, that took a little while. I didn't want to do shirtless scenes. I was, I had a little pudge on me then, man. It Please. wasn't until no, you yeah, did yeah, yeah, not. Yeah. I did, I did, guys. I, I did. Um, it wasn't until this role. So I got like, I got a quarantine baby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got pandemic pregnant along the way, <laughs> <laughs> and now. Uh, and then I get this call about this booking for uh, the Adam Project, and I was thinking, man, this what what an amazing role. And then my second thought was like, so it just has to be with the sexiest man alive, and uh, just how lean Ryan is naturally. I was like, God, what the hell am I gonna do? I'm gonna look like a like 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 the Pillsbury Doughboy beside. I I couldn't do it. So, anyways, I I'm dieting is honestly the hardest part of it all but it, it is the only thing that works it, the working out is easy but dieting god man what, i haven't had what was your diet i am now um during dark matter i was vegan mm -hmm. um but it was like not the good vegan <laughs> it was like everything was made of vegetables and <laughs> it was one of those vegans um, but now like what do you uh, what do you now um i lean towards keto and uh carnivore diet <laughs> ironically <laughs> enough uh yeah yeah but yeah just cutting out those carbs man there's a whole lot of so yeah, this is all you have to, to do. So, so, yeah, those of you watching at home, if you want to look like Alex Malari Jr., just cut down on the carbs and uh, and do stairs for an hour. <laughs> I just made two loaves of bread and ate two dozen protein cookies in the span of less than forty eight hours. So I am a lost cause at this point. <laughs> oh, sadly, we have lost Alex. He froze up. Froze up. But uh, John Burns was Mark Ben David aware of your lack of sword work. That first scene where you where you see you has got to be intense for him, I'm sure. Although in, in that instance, I'm sure they did not actually uh, use uh, the real uh, the real swords. If you but can hear us, uh, Alex, you may want to leave and come back in. But uh, that's pretty amazing that the fact that he, you know, as he pointed out, he had no sword work. And he had like three hours to learn that uh, fairly complex uh, coordination for yeah. the. Uh... Yeah. One thing I wow. did notice too, the past 15 minutes he was on, he smiled more than the entire series. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is one of the things that fans always noted, uh, either at the conventions or in interviews, is how much Alex smiles compared to his character. And you know, you always talk about, about um, actors not being like their characters. And he, of all the characters, is very unlike, um, you know, uh, for, or, or especially Ryo Ishida. Although, I mean, the same could be said for a lot of the characters. Like, you know, you, you met Anthony, and uh, he's uh, not really three, but remember there's bits of three in him. Jodel. I mean, not, I mean, not techie, but not too far off from uh, five. Roger um, is a little more, I think, uh, warmer than six, but six was pretty uh, pretty warm. How yeah, many carbs in whiskey? That. Good question. I don't know. How many carbs in, in whiskey? If you don't there's look it up, of... it'll never count. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's sugar. There's a lot of calories in alcohol. Yeah. I saw it. We covered it in the news this morning. They're making maple syrup whiskey up in Minnesota. And Ooh. apparently you can get extra maple syrup mixed into it. I'll have to see if I can get my hands on a bottle for you. Well, yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> <Called whiskey. laughs> yeah. And uh, we have Alex, I think, is back. One sec. Oh. Um, hey, there he is. Hey. There you go. Yeah, my the internet here is uh, a little spot. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, are you, when, are you it's awesome. when do you head back to uh back home um i'm scheduled to go back i think april 18th or no 20 22nd now Great. yeah i haven't been home in a while i, I can't wait yeah, yeah. I, I was just saying like i i'm i hate 
the whole climate change stuff, but I miss pollution right now. I'm, I'm tired of pretty places. <laughs> really? I'm, I'm so tired of pretty places for now. <laughs> I have the most amazing view, guys, but uh, it just it makes me want to puke. It. <laughs> I will trade you for the cornfield outside my house any day. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it right now. I, I'll do any. I'll even. I'll even harvest it all. Whatever you need. There you go. <laughs> I do have to mention something. Joe, it was about a month ago, he showed us this video of when he introduces who the mole was going to be. And it was fun watching you thinking you're going to be the mole going, give me, give me, give me, give me, when he had, had the mask. He was going to, you guys, it was off stage and he was revealing what was going to happen. And it was just what you were like a little kid. It was fun to watch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you I was to be really the bad guy. You oh, yeah, I want to be the bad guy. Four would be the like a wicked bad guy, and then I became the bad guy, and I didn't want to be the bad guy anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's it was so lonely. It was so lonely, man. I never got to film with them. I hardly got to film with the crew that season, and I was just so lonely, Joe. I was out, <laughs> I was out in Kitchener Waterloo. And, or some forest somewhere in Hamilton or something. And I was just so sad, man. Oh, <laughs> oh. Everybody's heart. That's what I'm going for right now. Oh, <laughs> I'm going for the sympathy here. <laughs> you too can save an emperor. <laughs> so, this this is your reaction to the ending of the episode? This is my reaction. It's like one initial burst. You can see the horror in my eyes thinking, is he really doing this? And then you can hear the ending. I'm going to play this one one second, Alex, because uh, Joe, uh, we ask uh, Katie sometimes to uh, record her. Uh, she's watching this for the first time to record cool. her reaction. Joe is giving me trust Let's issues. It, <laughs> Major trust issues. Sorry about that. You're not. <laughs> of course he's not. He's not Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, I'm like, okay, Katie, rein it in. Your neighbors are going to hear. <laughs> <laughs> the neighbors in the cornfield. Exactly, yes. <laughs> All the kids are going to come out of the cornfield. And it's just. It's like you're, you're frozen. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. inside inside my brain was fried I was like okay you just killed him okay she she deserved to die she just what did you do <laughs> all of them <laughs> oh my gosh I was saying yeah. that was uh, Will Waring the one uh, the one uh, episode he directed for us and then he got busy went off to do Game of Thrones uh, and it, um, but he was a lot of fun uh, to work with. Yeah, wonderful director, man. Yeah, yeah. Now, how does a director like tell people how to die? Like, <laughs> I'm because in some shows you see like people just get like stabbed or stuff, and they're just like oh, and die. Like this one actually well, looks legit. It was very specific. I mean, in in the script. They step be, you know, up behind them and, and cut their throat. So Will knew exactly how he wanted to shoot it, how he wanted to, you know. So, uh, uh, you know, just overall, I, I think this was a really well directed episode. Um, and also, I mean, uh, the John Stead stunt stuff is mm -hmm. also, you know, incredibly well directed. I mean, all, all that stunt stuff we could just kind of hand over to John Stead. And also, it's a testament to our actors, Melissa. And in particular, you, who were able to pick up all those weapons, but also, um, you know, put your body on the line for uh, for for all those sequences. By the way, this is this is one of my favorite ones for you. The, uh, I love that uh, leather jacket. Yeah, I love that leather jacket. Did you get the? Where it? is it? Oh, I was just going to ask. Did you get oh, to keep it? You didn't where keep it. Is it? I don't know I don't where know. it is. Can, can we find it? You, can I have can that ask, leather jacket? We can I ask need Noreen. more leather clothing. We can ask Noreen. You should have been able to keep it. I 
I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I guess so. I never asked. It was, this was my first series, Joe. I don't know what to do. I, you know, I, I didn't even know that we'll, I was allowed we'll, to go to the craft we'll table. Track down, we'll track down your leather jacket. I gave you the sword already. Yes, I do have the sword, we, we're yeah. going to meet up and, 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 and Alex was like, hey, do you have like the sword? I was like, sure, I'll give it to you. And, um, and he's like, yeah, just bring it to the restaurant. And I'm like, no, maybe. <laughs> maybe we'll keep it in the car. And after you know, we eat, I will, you know, I'll give it to you. I don't know if it would be wise to kind of bring the sword to the restaurant. Just walk oh, into question. an Olive Garden. Yes, I'll have a table for five uh, yes. and my sword. <laughs> oh, hey, Alex, who is your favorite Yo. director to work with on the show? And who is your favorite special guest? And who would you like to have changed roles with? Three questions. <laughs> Peggy. <laughs> okay. Um, what were all the questions you hear there? Okay, I can see them. Uh, director, I think. I want to say John Stead. Mm. I want to say John Stead. And, and uh, Murphy. Ron Murphy. Ron Murphy. Loved him. Um, well, the guys. two most theatrical directors, eh? Yeah. Both of them. Yeah, they have... sure. They yes, sure they are most theatrical. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what else we got here? <laughs> um, favorite special guest? Um. I don't know. I, you know, I, I don't know that one because it's just like, I, I was just so focused on lines or choreography. Mm -hmm. I, I don't remember. Um, yeah, I don't know. Next. We, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who, uh, change roles with, uh, this is a consistent answer, always um, Lemke. Yeah. I love the role of three. Really? Yeah. Consistent answer. Yeah. Yeah. I would have made a better three. Yeah. <laughs> After watching, like, yeah. Like, yeah, I would have done that better. Yeah. Oh, I see what you did. I could have taken all of that and that, applied some more things to that. All of a sudden, Joe's phone just is blowing up like, send me the link. I want in. <laughs> uh. Okay, these questions are pouring in now. I can see these things. Okay, cool. Uh, Before you answer that question, uh, Kate, uh, uh, Katie is watching this episode one other time, so we can't reveal any spoilers yeah. beyond oh. this. Okay, wait. So, uh, I, what are you on right now? What episode? Just the just last this one. This one. <laughs> Twelve. Oh shoot! Well, you you're in for a treat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a treat or is it more punishment because at this point it's like every episode since the nurse i'm like okay who's he gonna whack next Seven. it's like it's yeah. turned into a mafia series like all right this one is uh, borrowed time right now yeah. i'm really happy i could win you over right now basically <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'm glad i have this time to get your approval in life that i'm not a bad guy <laughs> But you know, it when is you funny, dropped though, out, I started the series. I started. I was. I remember. I was like, okay, three's jerk. Uh, one, two, and the four was just like, yeah, four is a cool kind of guy. Like yeah. you, know, you were one of the favorites from early on. Yeah, I mean, with that storyline, how can he not be one of the favorites, man? And, and yeah. I was saying that you know, one of the scenes I really liked in this episode is that scene with you and Zoe. The, you know, when you taught when. Rio says goodbye to the android because there's a chance he's not going to be coming back. And, and you see kind of that warm side of Rio, which I think is like really important that you know is there, you know, in spite of sort of, you know, he does ruthless things because he's practical and they need to be done. But you see kind of that, you know, glimmer of humanity in the way he treats the android. And I just thought that was kind of a beautiful scene between you and Zoe. Yeah. Yeah, I love doing scenes with Zoe. Can you write more of that? Um, I will. In, in in the miniseries, yeah. <laughs> What's the other one? Um, the the hot chocolate scene oh. I have with her. Yep. We're across each other on the table. Oh, I love yeah. that scene, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love work. Oh, what a wonderful book. Yeah. Yeah. How many? Alex, tattoos we have a lot of have? questions about your yeah. tattoos. Do you have any special? Anything special to say, share about your tattoos that you, if you want to share? Oh, frozen again. Frozen. Yeah. Well, that is a good pose. Just very. Yeah. That, that, that is like the publicity shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 There. Oh, oh there he is. Almost back. Oh. Almost back. Oh. 
this was not as good. I thought the other one was better. This one is a bit blurry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> me. Oh, so look at that light fixture. Mm. Quality. There, there's my. I'm afraid that you're okay. We I can hear you it. now. We can hear you. Um, that really good. Everyone is still there frozen there. Uh, tattoos, okay. nothing. Um, uh, a lot. Oh, no! There you go. no, no. <laughs> just when. Oh, there we go. There you go. Tattoos. Yeah. Um, no, not really. I kind of just. This one I wonder about. I put my last name on it as if I was ever going to forget. <laughs> um, <laughs> this one I walked into the tattoo parlor and I was just like, "Hey, you know what'd be cool, man? Like if you could write like." hard work and dedication so i'm never lazy for the rest of my life and every time i look <laughs> in the mirror i remember to not do that right did it um, work no i for, i always forget i i've forgotten about most of my tattoos guys <laughs> <laughs> um and then this one I, I literally sat in the chair and i let my friend um i just said hey uh can you just cover this part and he was like yeah i just watched 300 i was like all right cool let's <laughs> do that do something there so there's like I forget Spartan the other tattoos. You, do, you have like the dolphin on your back? I do have the dolphin on my lower back, right in the middle. <laughs> um, nice. <laughs> and I got I got Malazi right here. Excellent. Good. <laughs> yeah, good, yeah. good, good. Yeah. <laughs> Alex, uh, I like this question from Kareen. If you had to cast Joe as anybody on the Raza, who would who would Joe be Ooh. on the Raza? Hewlett's character, man. <laughs> our agent. He'd be perfect as our agent. <laughs> what was his name in the show? Tabor. Yeah, oh, Tabor. Man. Yeah, he'd be a wicked Tabor. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I think I've got the shirts. Anyway, <laughs> you, that, yo, yeah, he that was you, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing missing from his wardrobe were like three piece suits. Who wears yeah. three piece suits every day? That's the most amazing <laughs> man. You are you were like Tony Stark in my eyes, man. Aww. Joe would be a great supervillain. Yeah. Yes. He would be a great supervillain. Yeah. Yeah. Whiskey Club, yes, no. Yeah, I'm in. Right now. No. No, I was just wondering the the roll call, the wolf's howl. We heard about it from everybody. I ask everyone who comes on. How often did you come up to the to, to do the uh, whiskey club? I did I did a few times. Um, the reason why I didn't go all the time is because I, I can't hold my alcohol, man. I, <laughs> I, I am a cheap drunk and, and, and I wouldn't be able to work, man. <laughs> I would not be productive at all. So that's why every notice that on the days that I had short days or it was just the wrap end of the day. No, I lied. There was once, um, when we would do our photo shoots. Oh yeah, the gallery nice. days. The gallery days. Yes, I was just very nervous. And I, I needed courage. But by, by the way, it just got kind of mind blowing for me that you were talking about your diet and that you're, you're, you know, you, you cut out the carbs and everything. Do you remember the last thing we went out with? The last time we met up and went out for, uh, I think, went out for lunch. What we ate? Yeah. What do we? We had burgers, priest, right? Yeah. We had burgers, priest, yeah. and I think oh. fries, and uh, and a milkshake. And that's exactly what I'm having when I get back. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I've committed. I was like, hey, Sundays, I'm going to let myself have one cheat meal. Excellent. But I don't know yeah. anymore, man. Because I listen when you guys see Lenny Kravitz in person. My God, I I actually saw that him. Is- I saw him at uh, I was at. I was doing the pitching rounds. I think I was at Amazon and it was weird because I, I ran into like three different people um, and he was sitting there. I like the, there were two guys with suits and it was him with his like shirt totally undone. And he was like ripped. Uh, I should remember. Yeah. There you are. Oh, there you are. Just talking about Rip Lenny Kravitz. There, there. Yeah. Yeah. So now I'm like, hey, maybe I don't be poorly and just look like that until I'm 70 or whatever. Yeah. Um, Alex, I mean, Alex, without, 
I'm not sure if I can ask you this question without revealing spoilers, but I can where unplug would you, if you'd like. Unplug, unplug, Katie. Okay. <laughs> Uh, where would you where would you want to see four's character evolve in in a season four hypothetical season four or five? Uh, one make it back to the ship. That would just ultimate goal is get back onto the crew and stay loyal and be like, I'm never doing that again, guys. I'm so sorry. Um, I was hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I was just hungry the entire time. Um, yeah, number one goal would be get back with the crew and then after that fight some fucking aliens, man. That well, that was the plan on both counts. And I think I you know, we, we talked through obviously aliens we introduce, but I, I think we talked through how we were gonna get four back. It was actually mm-hmm. a kind of a, a quite brilliant way to sort of get him back. But it was. uh yeah. But uh it was but, yeah. yeah. But uh, you know, maybe maybe for the miniseries, maybe for the miniseries. The miniseries, we just do a full-on series, man. Two more Please seasons, and then I can finish the story. Yeah. God damn it! Someone pick it up. Someone do it. Please. It's got to be Netflix. But uh, it has to be. Yeah. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I wanna, I, I, like I said, I'm. I'm. I basically have a, a couple of other sort of things in the air, but uh, once they settle. I'm going to silk around back with Netflix because I'm going to go and pitch them a couple of things. And one of the things I want to pitch them is a Dark Matter miniseries. No, full series, please. Or at least they're all like an hour long. Well, of course. I mean, I'll say miniseries and then I'll say miniseries. How about a full series? Oh, I guess Katie can come back now. Oh, I'm sorry, Katie. Come back. Come back. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, <about> Katie. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Good conversation. Looked animated. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'll go back and watch it when I'm done with the series. Like right. I, I put a little book oh, we were just like speaking a little note. poorly about you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. It's the hair. <laughs> yeah, everybody wants more seasons. Hmm. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> this all Thirteen makes me years. sad. Yeah, we need more. Yeah, we do need more. We know that. Yeah, it's just a matter of someone just saying, "Okay, yeah, cool, give it to them." And you, you keep in touch with the cast or some of the cast. I mean, yeah. you, um, Lieutenant Anders, Jeff Teravainen, and you were like something out of a buddy picture for a while when you when you hit LA. I think was it last year? Jeff is my guy, and, and oh man, I love him. I love him, and. Um, I think he hates me, but I love him. <laughs> it's just like, I don't know, we just have this like chemistry where we're just, I, I'm just the shithead he keeps around and wonders why I'm his friend, but, but I am. And I love bothering him and telling him how, and reminding him that he's very old. <laughs> um, and, and, that, and that time is running running out really quickly oh gosh um, I'm a very good friend I keep things you know I keep things 100 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love, um, and, and Melissa keep up with love her um, yeah and sometimes uh, yeah we just we still have our group chat and sometimes Aww. we just have a quick hey random message miss you guys let's do it again Aww. and nice. let's see when the last one was because I miss them now Joe is there any chance that Misaki could have married um, Rio I don't think that was reading the cards I think that that conversation in uh, when she says because I loved you She's not saying, you know, I'm still in love with you. She's saying basically, you know, this was kind of a, a missed opportunity. And she kind of solidifies that by, by sentencing, sentencing, sentencing him to death. And yet, when the tables turn and he, he takes the rule, you know, you realize that, you know, her loyalty is ultimately to the throne. Mm. Uh, Jeff well, Miller yeah, asked March twenty second. That says a lot that March you're twenty second. That's when they're quick. That's not that far. That's Aww. Last week. Oh, 
Yeah, it was Zoe. Remember when we all did a show together? That's all. Hope you're all well and happy. Aww. And then we all just sent our, we miss ya. Yeah. This is such a wholesome yeah. crew. <laughs> That's what you get when you get a bunch of Canadians in a show, eh? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, would you do would you do a convention if Joe asked you to do a convention for Dark Matter? Yeah, I've done I've done um, a handful. Although I'm not, I feel like I'm not a fan favorite to bring to conventions either because I'm not a fun cosplay thing, or everyone thinks I'm I'm actually like gonna cut heads. <laughs> it's it's either just a boring thing or a fear based thing, but I have done a handful. Dark, dark dark matter isn't as on the radar as a lot of the um i i, I don't know i mean I hesitate is even more popular shows because there are a lot of shows that get a lot more um uh convention love that we would regularly beat in the ratings uh mm. so um contact your local uh convention organizer and let them know that they want to see uh you want to see alice Willary jr as long as it's COVID safe. Yes, eventually. <laughs> Next year. Well, you can't get safer than a cornfield, so uh, I might have a message coming. <laughs> hey, I'm all, I'm all about the country, man. I, I love it. I love it. I, yeah. There you go. If you ever want to chase tornadoes, hit me up. Oh, hell yeah. I definitely want to chase tornadoes. Twister is one of my favorite movies of all time, man. Nice. Oh, my gosh. I have the poster. Yes. I have the script. Oh, love it. Love it. Yeah. If you ever Probably get the time, there's a, a Twister museum in Waukita, Kansas, the actual place where they film the movie. And there's a <laughs> sweet little old lady with a big old crush on Bill Paxton. She will tell you everything you want to know. Oh, that sounds like a lot of dialogue that I would not be into. <laughs> <laughs> just like non-creepy fan film of just him walking down the street, and she will show you that for hours. Oh, man. It's adorable in a very weird way. <laughs> I did. Did I do that reaction where I thought it'd be fun to marry her? Well, I think I, he's asking for the reaction. For uh, yeah, I would, mean uh, that, wasn't, that wasn't the intention. I mean, there wasn't there was that wasn't the intention. But you know, who knows. In some alternate reality, maybe they did get married, settle yeah. down, friction. Yeah. <clears throat> have some K-pop kids. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. I, mean, I think Alex, that's the problem with. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Diga. Sorry. No, it's just when when a a story. I think in most people's minds, when someone mentions there was a love interest that most people are already when they hear that start planning out how that would evolve. And that's what they expect a set of, you know, the reality of life is we get disappointed and move on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Joe and Alex, what do you think about this comment? Nate says dark matter is like the original star Trek. Uh, people didn't know how good it was until it was gone. Maybe, maybe. I'm hoping, you know, I'm always heartened by by people who discover dark matter for the first time and, and, you know, fall in love with it. Of course, the difference being between, obviously, you know, is that it's it's a different era. I mean, Star Trek was distinct for being um, really one of only a handful of, of sci-fi shows back then. Now we have so many of them, it's hard, you know, it's hard to keep track of them all. So... Um, well, you yeah, you said maybe maybe sci-fi didn't give the proper uh, advertising dollars. That, yeah, there's that. There's, have, that. Right? there's also you know sci-fi clearly did not love us and they did not uh, give us the uh, the the marketing <laughs> that uh, that uh, they gave uh, some of their other shows. So uh, marketing. Part, part, what? <laughs> what, marketing. What marketing? Well, that's what I mean. They did not give it the kind of marketing or publicity they gave their their other shows, and yet I I. I want to point out that we actually ended up beating, despite that beating a lot of their other shows in the ratings. But, you know, far be it from me to sort of, uh, you know, wallow in the past. I kind of imagine, you know, fans at the time just handing out flyers like, hey, have you seen this show? They aren't marketing for it, but we are. Have you seen this show? 
That's hey, man, we had, that, we had the petition. We had that petition, and it, it was a, uh, one of the strongest petitions I've ever, I've ever come across. Yeah. yeah. It was like, I think yeah. it got up to like 100,000, over 100,000 uh, signatures, which was crazy. Yeah. yeah. That was great. I want to remind everybody in the chat and everybody who's watching the replay, uh, especially people who Stargate fans. If you have, if you know people who are Stargate fans, and and you should you should tell them to, every Stargate fan you know out there should watch Dark Matter. So get the get on them, get on your friends. If you like that, you want to like this, you're gonna like Dark Matter. There was a slight threat tone to that, so I would <laughs> I would just do what he says. Yeah. <laughs> what, what time is it uh, for you? Alex, it's seven eighteen. Yeah, you can tell. Like I'm turning, I'm slowly turning purple. And yeah, <laughs> seven eighteen. So you're in the same uh, time zone. A us. nauseatingly yeah. beautiful sunset occurring in front of you. Uh. That I am so sick and tired of. No, it's <laughs> it's gone. Thank God, I was tired of that picturesque scene. Mm. <laughs> now, are you are you in? Guys, a, I have <laughs> listen. I have seen so many double rainbows here. What? And it's like the, the wow. ends of double rainbows. And I have, no, <laughs> no, I want to see an Uber. I want to see a taxi. I, I want to see a, a bus that just probably needs a few repairs. I, yeah, I sound so ungrateful. <laughs> you just want to go home is what you want to do you are, to now, are you in I are you in an apartment or do they have you in some sort of a villa because you're like a big shot actor no what joe i i am i'm in a palace a palace do you I'm get in a palace you do you get a room in the palace i i have a very very nice room in the palace yeah it's, a, it's an epic. This doctor, um, this cardiovascular surgeon, I think, um, who built this, just told his wife, hey, what do you want? And his wife apparently wanted the Taj Mahal in the Dominican Republic. And so that's what was built, and that's what I did. And, uh, yeah. It's, that's awesome. Yeah, it's not my thing. I was very afraid and slept with the lights on for the first few days. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the medieval like era. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's very scary, and I just I don't know. Are you there with like other actors? Are they like in other rooms and in the? Palace? They just left him alone um, yeah, in the palace. There's, <laughs> there's a. They're just the peasants. And, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> No, um, there is there are two other actors and um, some like a few of the crew members, mm -hmm. uh, but we're leaving here in a couple of days and heading over to Punta Cana, so I'm I'm excited about that. Alex, you should while you're in the palace, you should shoot a video pretending to be the emperor. Emperor, I Rio. will uh, <laughs> get some B footage for us. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm gonna mini series. The mini series, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Shoot the promo from the mini series. Yeah. Already there. scoping out locations. Uh, I just, I if I, you know what, if I had time, I, I probably still wouldn't do that. I wouldn't want to butcher dark matter. I, I love that. <laughs> There Plus is you one of the other actors there, walking uh, out like a, um, being five, if you want to. And I think that was the last time I've ever butchered Dark Matter. For the first and last time. Um, I had five's wig on and I said, <laughs> well, because we're dangerous. I Someone find that footage. Oh, yeah. gosh. Yeah. yeah, we were in the makeup trailer and, and that was that. That was a good time. Mm. Yeah. This crew just sounds like so much fun. Like every time we have someone on behind the scenes, in front of the camera, everyone it's seems like so much fun. Dead and yeah, I mean, we need to lie about a lot of it. So, yeah. <laughs> so we were saying before you before you got here, Alex, that uh, somebody said is was Joe saving all the uh, all the violence and blood and gore for this episode. Uh, uh, let me put up the next picture. Yeah, kind of was.
I have this terrible setup here. The sun is setting. I'm in central time, so I'm like just completely washed out. But if I don't, I have a napkin in front of the camera because otherwise it'll just completely be like a ray of light everywhere. <laughs> it just keeps falling. It's a mess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and here we go. We take care of the seers here. I cheered for that internally. <laughs> <laughs> Revenge for Devin. There yes. Need to justify that death. Yeah. It's a little what? visual effect trickery here. So Alex, in your mind, in your mind, why did Rio kill his brother? What was my thought process in that time? Um, it would it was it was a point of um, Rio not having any sort of weak links and the fact that he could be swayed wasn't just didn't sit well with me. I think that was my thought process at that time. It was just, yeah. uh, I, I, if I was going to take over the throne, I would have to do it and I would have to trust absolutely everyone and everyone's loyalty would have to be just, um, just firm and has always been on the side of Zyron and, and, and uh, he had the influence of his, his mother. And that's that there was not something Rio would have allowed to exist because I mean, like I killed his, his mom, right? Yeah. So no loose ends, no loose ends. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. After I, like if, if someone, God, God, knock on like the largest piece of wood. If someone killed my, you know, mom, I, they would never be safe, ever. Mm. You take the actual sword and just turn it into four. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Poor As guy. You did say he would die for the empire, and he did. Oh, <laughs> that's the price of double. Oh. You lose <laughs> internet. Uh, any final? Um, I'll, I'm Joe. I'm sorry. I, I I was distracted and I didn't even put up the pictures we're supposed to put. Uh, that's okay. It doesn't matter. Uh, we'll, we'll, we can do pictures next week. Okay. Um, shall we? Uh, any final words, Joe? Um, um, oh, Alex has left us again, but uh, I want to say he was a pleasure to work with. This is one of my favorite episodes as well. Uh, not just because of the shocking ending, uh, but it sets up our season finale uh, that offers yet another shocker. Um, oh, no. No. But, uh, yeah, I hate to do this to you. Actually, there are a couple of shockers uh. in, in, in that one. Um, oh, Nina. Hey, miss you guys. Hey, you I'm sorry I couldn't make it this week. I'll be there next week. Nina, what? where are you? Okay, she's Nina. On, she's having fun in the sun without us. <laughs> so... <laughs> A few surprises uh, in store next week. Some good, maybe some not so good. But uh, as always, I'm interested to hear uh, your uh, your first time uh, reaction. Could I videotape my reaction to this one? You could. Again, okay. it's ending. Okay. I should just record them all just in case there's some mm -hmm. random. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, oh, I hope you're feeling oh, okay, Nina. Nina. I hope better. you're feeling okay. Yeah. I'll DM you later. Uh, so um, I think so. I think we're not going to get Alex back. Um, All right. But thank you, Alex, for showing up. A pleasure. Yes. Very Such much. Such an so. honor. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Hopefully, no uh, medieval castle ghost came and got him. That would be unfortunate. <laughs> I was thinking assassins like a Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom coming out of yes. the secret passages in there. That would be the best part of having a mansion like that is you could just add on so many I fun would, things to those films. I would totally live in a mansion. I would, I would be happy living in a mansion. Absolutely. We should all just like do like an Airbnb meetup live yeah. Dark Matter rewatch. I, yeah, I did that. <laughs> Somewhere warm. Uh, Alrighty then.
Um, uh, should I take a? Should I? Should we skip the pictures, Joe? Yeah, we'll just skip, skip, uh, skip them for today. But uh, okay, we'll bring back pictures next week. All right. Uh, uh, Katie, remind us really quick. Uh, your next show is when? Yes, it is Wednesday. I believe it is at five thirty Central, six thirty Eastern. And uh, it's with myself and Brandy. We're talking Avatar The Last Airbender, and we are chaos incarnate together. So if anyone wants to hear the weirdest fan theories and rewatch the episode and just have fun, join us on my channel. Awesome. Um, Adega, anything new uh, for this week for you? Uh, no, still working the uh, same old projects. They're coming along, except... I've gotten book two in the evolution series is going through the editing process now too. So oh other God. than that, it's still, everything's just turning along and blurry. <laughs> and, and Joe, um, great. Uh, uh, any final comment on your work on anything you want to share with the audience? No, no. I mean, uh, next episode is a pretty big one. Oh, pretty big one. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> And, you know, as often happens in these our season finales, um, it ends up s totally kind of shifting uh, the battlefield, so to speak, um, and uh, the status quo and uh, proposals into th season three, which is actually my favorite season uh, of, the, uh, of the series. Wow. Sweet. So, we can't wait for season three. All righty. Uh, thank you, Adega. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, thank you, Alex. Thank you. It's an honor to have you, Alex. You're always welcome back. And, uh, and thank you for, for spending some time with us. Uh, thank you, Gap, Rapunzel, uh, Matt, uh, John Burns, uh, Jeff Beeler, William Jackson, Kareen, Mr. Miles, Peggy, Colin, everybody who's been in Nate, Time Prophet, Matt Rowe, oh, uh, everybody who's been in here. Tomorrow, guys, Matt Ryan with Dark Matter Weapons. And uh, anybody who's a science fiction fan is going to want to drop in tomorrow as well to see Anna uh, Falkenstall, uh, a prop designer. Uh, so you guys – and well, prop, prop designer is, uh, is not really adequate. She does a lot more. So uh, join us tomorrow, guys. Thank you, uh, everybody. Have, be, have a great evening and stay safe. See you guys.